Well, again, we're going to look at Chapter 18, Homework in My Accounting Lab. I've got a slide there I just uh, filled out here before uh, we, we jump to the homework. Put this on the lecture video, but here it is again. If you want to look at this chapter in a nutshell, this little chart here shows what happens with leases, leasee, leasor. Again, lease being like an exide. This being like a caterpillar. If it's an operating lease, meaning one of those four, any of those four, if all four of those questions are a no, it's rent expense, rent revenue. If all the questions are no on those four. If one of those questions is a yes, one of those tests is a yes, it's asset liability, which the four-way test is called group one, and that's where a lease seat, the asset liability, if it's a lessor, it's either a direct or a sales type lease, if the group two is relevant as well, in addition to group one. Group one test. Group one test applies to both. Group two only for the lessor. So there is kind of that chapter in a, in a nutshell on one slide, which I always like to do. So let's go here and look at the homework. And I think you can see this, I hope so. I guess I'll find out after an hour or so and it comes back. What we see here is uh, nine questions and I'll look at each of these or at least give you the solution to each of these. What we have here is an eight year term with no purchase option or transfer of ownership. The terms of the lease are stated there. Shower must pay 3,800 beginning of each year. I would encourage you to write these numbers down and then work it by hand after we get done. Implicit rates, 11%. Iron stepping machine has a lot for 20 years. Fair value, 48,000. Borrowed at Jet Bank, the loan would have carried an interest rate of 13. What's more relevant here? 11. And the leasee knows the implicit rate. Leasee and lessor both know the rates. So don't think one's using one rate and one another when they're putting this on their books. Not that you're concerned about that from a leasee or lessor standpoint, but typically, if it's a capital lease for one, it's a capital lease for the other. All right, so what does this look like? Well, if we want to look at the present value, what are we trying to figure on the present value? $3,800 for 20 years at 11%, 3811 at 20 years. If you look at the solution here, I'll show you how to put that into, uh, wait a minute, I told you wrong. It's a year term. That's economic loss. A year term is what we want to do, all right? Getting ahead of myself. Economic life is 20 years. So eight years divided by 20 years, that's 40%, well, less than 75. So be careful. All right, so looking at present value, there's my 11%, that's less than the 13. So you, you use the lower the two rates. Eight periods, because you're gonna pay $3,800 for eight years. So the present value of that is 21,706. Right there. There's your group one criteria. No, no, no. And 21,706 divided by 48,000 fair market value. So all of these are enough. So this is, this is what? This is, a, this is an operating lease. And they show you there that this lease does not meet any of the capital criteria. Okay. One down, eight to go. Number two. Looks like this is going to be an operating lease as well, but reading through the information there, I'll let you do that instead of me talking. But you can pause this and, and then pick up. I'll make this go faster, right? All right, so my $3,800 that I have to pay up front when they deliver the equipment first of the year, $3,800 prepaid rent on the leasee cash, and then at the end of the year, what am I doing? I'm just taking it out of earned revenue, excuse me, 
the less less or so this is the leasee entry end of the year i would take that out of prepaid rent but of what rent expense they don't ask you for that they want to know what entry would you make if you're the lessor so here they're showing the leasee i'm not sure if this works with me writing on it it didn't yesterday what entry is being made at the same time you're paying cash to the lessor all right number three Look the terms of the lease, 11 year, 5,000, 11 year life. So that's 100%, that tells you it's a capital lease, doesn't it? Depreciated straight line, like most companies do. Present value, lease payment using 12.5%. And the assets fair value on the date the lease is signed are both equal to 32,682. So if you want to calculate this yourself, well, let's just look at that. I actually brought my calculator today. Ordinary annuity, nope, we want to look at annuity due. Remember me saying that? Annuity due table. So what is 11 years, if I get these rates right, which the problem I'm going to run into, they don't have a 12.5% rating here, do they? I don't think. Nope. 11 year. So it's somewhere between these two numbers, isn't it? 6.65 to 6.42. I would never do that on an exam. So what is that? That's about six point five three. Let's try that. Six point five three. All right, see I'm doing I'm going between twelve and thirteen. Again, I wouldn't do this on the exam, but 6.53 times 5,000 is 32,650. All right, so I get 32,650 just by eyeballing it, and that's close. So you see how to use the table? Annuity due table. Not ordinary annuity, because you're paying up front. That's what due means, up front. We did ordinary annuity on those investments where either the cash was coming in or the cash was going out at the end of the term. All right, so there's my leased machinery and my obligation 32682. Day one, same day when it's delivered, I gotta make a payment, write them a check. But well, that's just a journal entry I'm making in accounting. But I've got to make a cash payment, don't I, for five thousand? Thirty-two six eighty-two. Minus five thousand. Now I'm what, 27,682, obligation, lease, I get that right? My interest expense is gonna be 11%, excuse me, 12.5%, 11 year, 12.5%. Right there, 32.682 minus 5,000 times 12.5% is 34.60. Go back over here to this other table. Interest payable, but they're not making the reduction, are they, till the next day? Actually, they don't even, have you sh they don't even show that they're doing it, do they? 3460. 
Hmm. Since it's December 31, they don't have you make the January 1 entry. What we said that was 3460, and the journal entry that you would make on January 1 the next day, of course, they set that up as interest payable. Which is that is not correct, what I just did there. So much for erasing. 3460 is my interest expense. All right, cash is going to be five thousand. All right, I have to pay five thousand. Interest expense is thirty four sixty. Of course, they call that they've already accrued that, and on December thirty one. So, in reality, that should be payable. And then, what's the difference? Obligation, lease. 5,000 minus 3,460. 1540. 1540 goes up here. That becomes 26,140. For the next year, which what you would multiply by 12.5 percent, thirty-two sixty-eight. It was thirty-four sixty. Now it's thirty-two sixty-eight for the second year, and so forth. But they don't really show that on this problem. But it's good to to work through this and see what's going on. They just stop there. See the interest payable, they're recognizing that interest expense and interest payable December 31, but they're going to turn around and debit interest payable on January 1. That's what that entry is I'm making. And then you got to show the reduction on January 1 of your liability for the next year. They do show the depreciation expense, which is 32,682 divided by 11 is 2971. All right. Maybe some of these other ones will be a little more in depth. All right, let's look at number four. Here's a capital lease for a lessor. You can tell by lease receivable, right? I'm Bailey, I'm Caterpillar, I'm leasing this equipment to someone. What's the terms of the lease? Six year, 5,000. Fix your life, six divided by six, that's 100%, that's more than 75%, so you got a yes, you only need one yes to make this capital. Again, these are old standards. This is prior to 2019, but that's what the book has, and it's good to understand the past in order to know what is being done now in corporate America. Capital leases is what's relevant going forward for most leases. Present value, the minimum lease payments using 12.4%. Hard to use a table when the last one's 12, now this is 12.4. So we're just, we'll just assume it's 22,847 is accurate. I'm sure it is. Uh, they paid fair value to acquire the equipment. Lessor's implicit rate is 12.4. Again, the lower of the rates is what you use always. Always remember that, the lower the rates. And the leasee and the lessor usually know what the rates are that each has. All right, so there's the present value, 22,847. And you can do the present value on here, but you know how you can figure that out. No, no, yes. And 22,847, so it's 100%. And so group two is relevant. 
So they ask you to make the entry for retro. Retro leasing from retro. So this is from, that's why it's a, a lessor problem. Lease receivable 22847 inventory. So the inventory is coming off your books if you are retro and going on to the books of Loomis. And for Loomis, this would be a capital lease as well, but it would be an obligation for them, not a receivable. All right, see the mirror image? These are good exercises to go through and work not only the lessor side, but the leasee side as well. Or do the leasee side and the lessor. Just do them side by side. Be good practice. Interest receivable. Again, it's going to be 22,847 times the, that market rate, that implicit rate. That will give you your what? Your, what? your interest revenue, not interest expense. Remember, I'm the one leasing the equipment. So there's my interest receivable and interest revenue as of December 31, because we're accrual basis of accounting. You're going to turn around and what? Credit interest, re interest receivable on January 1 and debit cash when you're paid. Or whenever that happens in January. It may not be January 1, but shortly thereafter. All right, that's a good exercise. I'm not sure there's anything in the solution you need to see. Let me pull it back up there. There it is down at the bottom. All right, number five. Again, I can probably speed up on these because you can stop and look and think about what you're seeing as opposed to in class. That's, um, I do tend to go fast in class, but I don't have to get through everything. All right, so here's number five. This looks like this is a capital lease for the lessor, it's what they're wanting you to do. And this is a sales type lease. Now going back to number four, if you want to make a note, number four was a direct financing. Right? You didn't see a journal entry there for inventory and cost of goods sold, did you? So this is a sales type lease. And there's two different types, sales type and direct financing. I've already, I've already erased it. I'm gonna put up that, that chart I had at the very beginning. So my lease receivable, pull up the information, 15 year, lease payments of 4,300, 15 year life. So that tells you it's a capital lease, 15 divided by 15 is 100%, it's more than 75%. Again, they're using factors like 11.3, which I couldn't use on an exam unless I told you what the actual Tell you what the actual amount is, which is what they do. They're both equal to 33,852. Pay 19,600 to acquire the equipment. So you're thinking what? That's inventory, right? 19,600. It's going to become cost of goods sold. And that's going to be your revenue, 33,852. All right. So you've had time to look at that. So there's the transaction. Lease receivable. I'm the seller, I'm the lessor. There's coming off my books, the inventory, 19,006, the inventory, the cost of goods sold, lease receivable, sales revenue. See how that works? Four journal entries. Very fundamental. All right, then the first payment, same day, January 1, 4,300. So that 33,852 minus 4,300. You can see what I'm writing on here. Seems to work on the PowerPoint, but not on the homework. At least it didn't last time. 33,852 debit and a credit for 4,300. My lease receivable. Thirty-three eight 
So that times my rate, what did we say that was? 12.4%? 11.3. I'm still on the last problem. Times 113 gives me my interest revenue of 33.39. All right. You can probably figure that out if you can't see what I'm writing there. And they, again, they don't have you actually do the reduction of the lease receivable, but that's what you would do, right? 33.39, and the payment is how much? receiving the cash, aren't we? 4,300. You got to keep your lease and lease or straight. Interest revenue, in my short memory, 3,339. So my, what, my, Lease receivable is going to be reduced by whatever 4,300 minus 3,339. 961. Again, they do this with the interest revenue being recognized at the end of the year end, and then they don't show the actual amount the next day. I don't know why they don't do that, but. There it is. All right. Put the solution up there if this helps. Up there. All right, number six. The information here. Sales price, I guess I should read this. Wilkerson Sales entered a lease agreement, four years, for Rachel Boy. And the question is, what are we supposed to do? So we're doing Wilkerson. So they're leasing from, so this is a leasee, right? Always important to find out if you're doing lease C or lease or. Kind of jump through this, but so we don't do this as a lease C. So we don't care about the sales price, do we? Because you're the lease C. Use of life is nine years. No transfer of ownership, no bargain purchase. All right, the other piece of information I need is right up here at the top. Four years. So four years divided by nine is less than 75%. All 
Okay, so what's the present value? 11,195 at 7% for four years. Seven percent, four years, eleven one ninety five. Present value of that, forty thousand five seventy four. So let's look at the criteria. No, no, no. Right, four divided by nine is forty four point four percent, and forty five seventy four, which we just calculated, fifty thousand five seventy, eighty point two percent. And if we actually use the tables, 11,195. Annuity due, click on that one right there. Seven percent for four years is three point six two times three point six two four three two. It's forty thousand five seventy four. Three point six two four three two. Forty five seven four. All right, the table didn't match Excel that time, didn't it? All right, so going down the five questions, or four questions, four steps, all of those were no, so not a capital lease. Prepaid rent and cash. End of the year, take it out of prepaid rent, put it to rent expense. All right, number six, number seven. Operating lessor. It says, Perillo sales enter the lease agreement to lease a piece of machine for four years from Elrod. And the journal entry said we should make the interest for the lessor. They tell you that this time, Elrod. And then they throw in it guarantees a residual value of 13,277. But we'll get to part B. Let's look at part A first. Again, lessor. Sales price of 50707 Useful life is nine years. No guarantee residual value. That's part B. 11196 due at the beginning of the year. No transfer of ownership or bargain purchase. That's the first two questions. 7% implicit rate is known by both leasee and leaseor. Cost of the equipment is 50707 It's fair value. Wouldn't be a gain or loss, would there? Assume there are no material uncertainties or no income. No material uncertainties regarding future cost of the lease. Collectability is reasonably assured. All right, so 40578 Gonna be the present value. I won't bother looking that up. That's the same one we just did, wasn't it? Sounds like same value. All right. I don't think I'm working the same problem again. I do that sometimes in class, and I don't have anybody out there to correct me. All right. So it's a. Sorry about that. All those are no. So it's an operating lease, right? So there's no transfer of anything since it's an operating lease. This is a lessor. Now this is a separate problem, but it goes along with not the last one we just worked on. So we do have a cash entry because I'm receiving the cash that's being paid by the other company. So I earn rent revenue at the end of the year. I just reverse that out. 
Well, then part B is, I guess, the, the more complicated part of this. They're asking, what if there's a guaranteed residual value of 13,277, what is the present value then? Right, because it looks like it's gonna turn it into a capital lease based on that. Guaranteed residual value. So let's look at the solution up here. In the interest of time, part B. What's the present value of 13,277? At 7% four years. That's the present value of a lump sum. Not an annuity, lump sum, right? Residual value at the end. All right, so that residual value is 10,129. Added to what we did in part A, 40,578. So we got 50,707. Now that puts you up beyond 90%, doesn't it? So that guaranteed residual value, which means me as a leasee, the leasee is going to have to pay that at the end to this company that's leasing it to me. So I've got to pay this like a balloon payment at the end, residual value at the end. So that makes this a capital lease because of that. Interesting. Right, see what's going on there? Elrod boy, they expect that 13,277. Elrod expects that. I work for Perillo sales. I work for Perillo sales. I got to pay Elrod boy at the end 13,277. But that's the present value of, of a dollar table. What did we say the rate was? 7%, four years, present value of a dollar. 7%, four years, what is that, 76,290, 0.76,290, 0.76,290, times 11, one, no, no, 11. I got so many windows open right now and all of this. 13,277. But thank goodness there's no music playing. 10,129. So if I had to 10,129, let me go back here and click on the solution. 10,129. Plus the 4578, 50,707. So that's how you get that. That's present value of a dollar. That's because that's present value of a lump sum. That third that balloon payment, 13,000 and, and whatever. All right, so that's number seven. Let's look at number eight. Two more. Doing pretty good on time, I think. I was paying attention when I started the homework. Here it looks like a capital lease. And they're gonna use a table form on this. Good exercise, you know, like T accounts. You'll come to love it someday. Garvey leasing had quite a few cars to be leased to Darwin River Company. DLC paid 273,000 to acquire the vehicles, which is also the fair value of the fleet. Annual payments, 57500 Five years. Economic life is five years. Five divided by five, so you know it's a capital lease. Borrowing rate is 5%. So that's the fact we're going to use. We're going to use five years, 5%, aren't we? Times 575 Annuity due. Five years, 5%. 4.54595. 4.54595. You multiply that by $57,500. You should get 261,392. So the lease term is greater than 75%. The present value, 261,392. Divided by 273,180. That's more than 90%. So they got both those started as being yes, but the capital lease because one of those is. It doesn't have to be both. 
we put that on our books, lease vehicle, obligation, and immediately at the same time, we reduced that obligation by 57,500. 261, 392. Lease obligation. And immediately we reduced that by 57.5. And that's what we're going to multiply by our factor or our interest rate, which I think, what did we say was 5%? They don't do a T account. They want to show you in table form, which is fine. This is good. 261, 392. There's my payment. First day. So there's no interest expense. But now I've got 203, 892. And that times my interest rate. I suppose they're going to have you do this. It's 10195 interest expense from my payment. It's going to be a principal reduction of 47305 have to do this part but there it is it's going to change every year what's going to happen at the end eventually that's going to be zero the end because you own it the end you've got an asset the obligation's gone you own it it's like a mortgage payable very similar all right there's the interest expense interest pay again they break this up i wish they would but they break this up showing the accrual on december 31 what happens on January 1? Oh, they are going to show it on this one. All right, good. So there's the interest expense accrued. Interest payable. There's my depreciation, which is right up here. My present value, 261,392 divided by five years. Yes, 52,278. Then they show that interest payable. To the interest I've been making there, interest payable is interest expense. You've already expensed it in 2016. But now you got to take it out of the payable and take it out of your cash, right? Eliminate your payable, take it out of cash. And then there's my plug number, 47305. 47305, I post my journal journal over here to lease obligation. There it is reduction of my obligation. Then the next year, there's my interest expense again. There's my interest expense. And then 7829 from 5750. It's gonna be my reduction the next year, which is what, 57.5 payment, 57.5 minus 78.29. 49671. That doesn't sound right. I think I did something wrong there.
six, five, eight, seven, That's right, forty nine six seventy. Look right. Got a new balance. Keep doing that for two more years. Okay, one more. Number nine, Mr. Gansick, Food Mart. Incorporated lease the entries into an agreement to lease mobile refrigeration equipment from Pereira Products. Cost of the equipment is two hundred ten thousand. Prepare the journal entries for twenty six and twenty seventeen for Pereira. So that tells you this is a lease. We don't know if it's operating or capital, but this is a lease lease or problem. Pereira. All right, so let's look at the detail. Fifty thousand a year, five years, fair value of the equipment. So I'm already thinking two thirty one four ninety five versus two ten. Sounds like a what? Sounds like a sales type lease. If it's a capital lease, that's a big if. Five years, fifty thousand. Economic life, five years. Five divided, so it's a capital lease. Five divided by five. Look at the borrowing rate, 6%, 4%. You always use the lower, 4% for 50,000. 231, again, 231 is the fair value of the equipment. Let's see if the present value, we have to calculate the present value. It's the present value, what is it? Because the present value is what we put on the books, not this. All right, there's the present value, 231, right? 231, 495, they've already done it for you. 4%, five years, 50,000. 231, 495. No, no, yes. Five divided by five is a yes. 231 divided by 231, that's 100%. Group two, group two is in play since this is a lessor problem. All right, so we have, this is a sales type because there's a dealer manufacturing profit here. If it's a direct financing, you wouldn't have this. All right, so there's some calculations you can, you got there that you can look at. So let's go back here and look at the actual solutions. Lease receivable. That's the present value, 231.95, present value. Not fair value, present value. That's why I don't like it when they have present value and fair value the same in these problems. Present value, least receivable. Sales revenue, it's gotta be equal to that, right? Present value, cost to get sold. You gotta get this off your books. I'm the seller, I'm the leaseor. Take it out of my inventory. Transfer it over to cost to get sold. And the difference is my sales income, net income. There's my initial first payment that I'm going to receive when I deliver this equipment. I received 50000 There's my interest receivable, which again is 231495 the least receivable. You saw that in another problem. 231,495 times 5%. Ooh, but this is mid year, isn't it? I gotta be careful. 5% times 231,495 divided by 2. If I can look at that solution. 
231,495. Oh, we got to make sure we take out that 50,000 too, don't we? We paid up front. So in reality, we've got, it's not 5%, it's 4%. Sorry, it's five years, 4%. Still thinking about the old problem. 231,495, and I'm receiving cash day one, 50,000. So in essence, I've got, that's why you need to use T accounts. 231,495 minus 50,000 times 4% times half a year. It's only six months interest. Be careful there. 3630. All right. Then what happens on July 1? That's where the one year next payment occurs. Well, you got two six months of uh, two, is that a word? Two six months. <laughs> 3630 plus 3630. 42740. Interest receivable. All right, so let's look at these journal entries. There's at the end of the year. Then that's going to sit there for six more months. And then what happens on July 1 of 2017? They're not doing accrual on June 30th, which in reality you would in real life, but there's my next receipt, $50,000 that comes in one year later. There's the interest receivable that's been sitting there since December 31. So I'm gonna get rid of that. There's my new interest revenue for the six months in 2017. The other 3630 there was in 2016, right? Recognize the revenue in the year in which it's earned. Okay, and then the difference is goes against my least receivable, 42,740. 42,740. And then now they have you do it again for 2017. It's a good exercise because it goes all the way through and shows the reduction. Let me put that in a T account. 231,495. See, same principle here. Least receivable. This is for a lessor. Uh, what was it? Fifty thousand. That's 181,495 times 4%, divided by two. Thirty-six thirty. So that times two from 57 to 50,000. I mess that up. 50,000. That was right. So 50,000 minus that 3630 times two, which is what? Zero, six, 12, one. That's 72. 60, and that's 42,740, sounds familiar, there it is, the least receivable, 42,740, so the next year, 181,490, Five minus forty two seven forty one thirty eight seven fifty five. So that times one oh four 
annualized is 55.50, but remember, this is six months. So that divided by two is 27.75 annual. This is for July 1. Hopefully that's right. There it is, 27.75. End of the year, interest receivable, interest revenue, and of course then six months later, you're gonna make an entry just like this. So that's gonna be what, 27.75, 27.75. That's always 50. And then your lease receivable is gonna be the plug, plug number. It's a good way to end, plug number. All right, so that's chapter 18 homework. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'll get back with you as soon as I can. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.